Hello everyone and uh, welcome uh, to your lesson today. It's like I'm really there. Magic. Ooh. Um, so you should have all gathered your one of these. Ideally you need five of these to cover the five poems that we have learned so far. Um, I'm going to do London with you guys because I know that that's the poem we've been struggling with the most. Uh, so the first thing you need to do with your sheet, feel free by the way to follow along with what I'm doing, copy what I write as best you can um, and then there's one sheet done for you right away. You write the poem's title right in the middle of the revision clock. And the best way to get these revision clocks uh, working is to do an image related to them so I could do my very crafty London eye here to, um, wow, what artistry. I could do some skyscrapers um, and uh, maybe, because uh, it's the Industrial Revolution, some smoke out of chimney. You guys will do much better. So do a nice little image, because then it just brings the whole thing together and it'll be beautiful, wonderful. And then you fill in each of these boxes around here. Um, I'm gonna go uh, all the way and uh, use felt-tip pens with a different color in each section, because we want these to be things you actually revise from in the future. You can do these in any order that you like, and my best advice is to look back in your poetry anthology, look back in your books, if you're struggling from memory with how to uh, fill all these in. Um, I would say the easiest box to fill in, first of all, is this one. Three adjectives to describe the tone of the poem. I would say that William Blake, when he wrote this poem, he felt um, quite enraged, because he was quite angry about all the problems. Um, and then I could even, you know, keep adding pictures as you do this do kind of an enraged, grumpy face. Wow, art again. Um, and then another two adjectives might be uh, passionate, because he's passionate about the problems, um, and maybe a bit dismayed as well, like a bit almost shocked about everything he's seeing. You do a little shocked face. Uh, and passionate, you do a little heart. You guys will, of course, be better than me in everything you draw and create. Um, then I think maybe go to summarise the poem in three sentences. So for this, um, the narrator, which could be Blake, but we don't know for sure. The narrator walks through London. Full stop. He notices many injustices, e.g. poverty, full stop. And I know I've said summarise poem in three senses, but for a poem as short as this, actually, I can summarise it in just two. Um, and I think that two is enough. So don't worry about it being exactly three, just make it fill the box. Um, then um, I might want to come to key themes over here. Now, of course, it's power and conflict, so at least start there. So obviously this is a power poem in terms of the power of the government, etc. It's not really a conflict poem. I guess you could say class conflict, though. That might be a nice way of looking at it. Um, and then you can look at other key themes. So poverty is a theme. Um, control, perhaps, is a theme that's explored in this poem, you know, the chart of Thames, etc. Um, and if you can think of more, please do add them. Those are the key themes, you know, themes are universal concepts we all understand and get on board with. Um, then what I would do next is poems this would compare well to. Um, so obviously you guys haven't studied that many poems so far, that's okay. We already know that the only one we've really done that it goes well with is Ozymandias. And you could do a little picture to signify Ozymandias if you can come up with that. Um, I will also give you free that I would say this poem compares quite well with um, Tissue. We've not done it yet, but one day we will. It's a very difficult poem, but it could compare well with that. And then there's more and more and more, but we'll stop there for now. Um, then, as you'll notice, there's key quote one, key quote two, key quote three. These are the most important ones in terms of revision. Um, because you want them to be the best quotes in the poem. Now, to help you today, and you could have used these help sheets for any of the boxes so far, um, I have printed off, and they're nicely stapled together, um, help sheets for each of the poems. So I'm going to take my um, 
William Blake London help sheet. Uh, but just so you know, there is, of course, one for Ozymandias and Charge of Life Brigade, etc., etc. There's not enough for you all to do the same poem at the same time. So just grab the one that you need as you need it. Um, so actually, these are quite advanced help sheets. So especially for those of you aiming for top, top grades, they, it's basically um, a book that gives you kind of essays on the poems, if you like. Um, and then you read through it and it gives you the context information, it gives you um, uh, the key quotes um, and everything. So, for example, the first thing to notice about Blake's poem is it's burning anger. And, of course, we put enraged as a tone of the poem, so that works as well. Um, and then you could, you know, you can skim read through these and land and water in this poem have both been charted. So, obviously, that's my key quote one. Now, I do want the full quote. Um... I walk, I'm gonna have to write in pen to squeeze it in, through every chartered street, comma. We do a little slash thing here when it uh, changes the line of poetry, near where the chartered Thames does flow. There we go. Um, and you can do a nice image for that. You know, we've got the Thames, but then this idea of it being chartered, so you could almost like divide the Thames up. It's being all grid, gridded off, if you like. Um, what would be exceptional to do with these quotes is that you, of course, then do some um, explosion analysis around it. So chartered, we know, is a verb and it means owned. Um, and then you can look at the Thames as natural imagery. And of course, this whole line is about you know, the rich and powerful wanting to own everything, which brings me on to the next box for each quote. If possible, I would like you to make a contextual link. Um, so we can just write in. In fact, we could see what they say here. Land, water, poem, both been charted and ad Oh, it's an adjective. My bad. See how useful these sheets are, guys. I just thought chartered is in like to charter something, but technically, yes, it is an adjective. Sorry about that. Do correct it as I have done. Um, that indicates that they have become property to be bought and sold by charter companies. However, Blake subtly implies a potential counterforce. The verb flows with a slight echo of wonder, perhaps implies that the river at least has the potential to escape its commercial restriction. Very nice. Um, and then it goes on about the church and that will definitely give me my second quote. Um, so the rich and powerful of London try to take ownership of natural things. Then for key quote two, it mentions here on my help sheet. So again, you can steal anything you like, steal their wording. I'm just gonna do my quote nicely in the middle so I can do some explosion around it. Um, here the churches are blackening. Remember the quote is blackening church of Paul's. Um, and I'm just going to write down blackening church. And I remember you guys wrote about this beautifully. We can look at that verb blackening. It's a continuous verb. It's not just a blackened church, it's blackening. It continues to, um, so it's, it kind of reinforces this everlasting corruption and decay. And then of course the church being a religious symbol. And of course, our context link for that, we know that William Blake is religious. He believes in God, but he doesn't agree with the church. So Blake against church, but loves God. It's important that 
you guys understand that he wasn't against God, he wasn't against Christianity, he's just against the church as an institution, and he criticises their hypocrisy. It's a nice word to use. So the church will preach all these things about goodness, charity, and yet they're letting these poor chimney sweepers um, be completely um, kind of uh, ignored outside the church wall. Um, and then in key quote three, um, if I read through again, um, through my help sheet, What's another good quote? Oh, it's got something here for one of my other books though. The poem's rhyme scheme is cross-rhyming quatrains, A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, and so forth. So it's basically an A, B, A, B rhyme scheme. So this goes in this box here for structure. And I'm just going to quickly put A, B, A, B rhyme. And what's the effect? Well, hopefully this help sheet will tell me. Uh, all the rhymes are masculine, Ooh, a choice that also contributes to the peculiar intensity of the poem. For example, in the fourth line, the stress starts with a strong stress on marks and ends with another strong stress on woe. Each stanza constitutes one sentence completed in its final emphatic monosyllable. Oh, nice. So like every, I think mean, that's an interesting thing about the poem. Each stanza ends on a one syllable word. Meter, rhyme, diction, lination, syntax, all work together to amass maximum weight and stress on the last keywords. Um, so last word, oh, I've chosen a bad pen for this, monosyllabic creates intense tone. Thank you, help sheet. So obviously from the help sheet, don't copy things word for word, but just take anything you can um, and, and find anything. Um, and then let's, yeah, let's choose this quote here, the dark mark, the marks of weakness, marks of woe for our quote free. Why not? Marks of weakness, marks of woe. And I'm sure we're going, oh, not woes, just, just the one woe. There's too many woes in London as it is. Let's just keep it at one. Uh, and of course, we can look at the repetition and we can look at the meaning of this word marks. And I'm not too sure what to say about it yet, but this help sheet is going to tell me. Remember, this is, these are more challenging essays. So if you're not getting on board with these, just stick to the stuff in your English books. Mark is used here first as a verb and then as a noun. Okay, so this one's a verb and then as a noun. As in two mark versus a mark. And is a word connecting the narrator to the suffering people. Blake could easily have chosen a different verb. He was an engraver as well as a poet. And to engrave the pictures that accompany the poems and songs of innocence and experience, he would have had to cut into metal compared to see or notice mark signals permanence. So good. I think that's what we want to get at. Permanence of the um, destruction of poverty. He doesn't just see the weakness and see the way he like he marks them and the marks are permanent. I think that's a really nice point to make. It also implies something that is doomed. That's an, a really nice point. Um, if you think of Harry Potter and the Dark Mark, so um, sense of something doomed. Very nice. Um, and then they gave us the context link three, um, which is that Blake was an engraver. And so therefore knows the um, kind of the meaning, but also the importance of this word. Importance of this word. And we can do a little arrow as well to show what we're linking it to. Um, and then we've only got one box left. What's the poet's message? And you guys were great with this on your homework. You can, of course, skim through the help sheet and hope that they eventually tell you why William Blake uh, wrote the poem, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think off the top of our heads, we can probably do this. In a nutshell, Blake wants to... Um, kind of in the same way William uh, Wilfred Owen does, like to expose everything. So let's use that word, expose the 
class divide and oppression of poor in famous sorry, capital city. Because as we know, London has all these connotations of wealth and power, and yet William Blake is showing the kind of dark underbelly, but the true dark underbelly of it all um, to everyone. I'm sorry this took a while, but of course I wanted to explain how you might use um, all of your stuff to create one of these lovely revision clocks. Yours will look better. Um, I've realised maybe don't use the felt tip pens if they're going to be a bit too thick and you won't be able to fit, fit it all in. Um, but do add pictures, do add lovely things, um, and these are lovely to go on your wall to revise the poem at a later date. See you after half term. Bye everyone.